I'm making this video to explain some of the new features in Ultra Engine, uh, specifically API uh, features that you might not be aware of. Now, if you've already seen anything about Ultra Engine, you probably know the performance is really, really fast. And that's because Ultra Engine is designed to avoid bottlenecks that other engines, including Leadworks and Unity, both, uh, both just get stuck with. So when when your game scales up and you start adding more and more objects to it, uh, Ultra Engine can easily, easily perform 10 times faster than either either of those engines. Uh, so that's really great, but that's not what I'm going to what I'm talking about right now. What I'm talking about right now is the new API features that you might not be aware of. And you could go through the documentation and find all of this stuff, but I want to make this video to kind of highlight uh, some of the things and show you uh, just how cool they are because there's some features in here that are very special. Now the first, uh, the biggest immediate change that you'll notice with Ultra Engine versus Leadworks is everything is now using shared pointers. So all of these commands return a shared pointer instead of a raw pointer like Leadworks does. And I usually just use auto, the auto keyword so that I don't have to type out shared pointer window, the exact um, type of uh, variable that I want. It's just easier uh, in most cases to go like that. Um, but shared pointers are wonderful because they you'll never have an uninitialized pointer error. You'll never have an invalid object. It's like garbage collection without the overhead of garbage collection. So there's really no reason not to use them and they're one of the most wonderful things in the world. Another thing that's pretty cool is we can load files directly from URLs. And so with all the documentation, I've just stored all the files in the GitHub repository and you can load them directly from there. So you can just copy and paste some code from, uh, from the documentation and you don't have to worry about downloading a zip file and extracting it to get the resources that the example needs. It'll just all uh, uh, download it automatically from the server. Now here we have a GLTF model and this is showing off the PBR rendering. This is a nice model to test with because it's got a variety of materials. You've got the plastic, you've got the different metals, and it looks nice. GLTF from Kronos is a really wonderful format because it natively supports PBR materials. The whole material system is built around physically based rendering. And you can download a ton of ready to use 3D models from a site like sketchfab.com it supports animation. It supports really everything we need. And so this is our main file format in Ultra Engine. Of course, we still can load models from the Leadworks model format. And we also provide an FBX to GLTF uh, file converter. This is sketchfab.com. And they've got thousands of 3D models that are ready to use in GLTF format. Animation materials will all work. There's very good consistency between what you see in Sketch on the, their website and what you see in the engine. So this would be my recommendation for the first place you should go uh, when you're looking for 3D models. We have a lot of new possibilities with terrain. You can manually set the uh, height of each terrain point. The whole terrain API is very, very well documented. And it's just got a flexibility about it that Leadworks did not have. So here in this uh, example program from the documentation, we can sculpt the train ourselves. And that's just less than 100 lines of code. The terrain system does not use layers. It's layerless. Now this is really fantastic because it allows you to just paint whatever material you want at any point on the terrain. And the terrain will just 
display it. So you don't have the limitation of, okay, how many layers do I need? Um, I have to create my layers first and then apply them. You just paint whatever material you want. And the terrain supports up to 256 different materials. So hopefully that will be enough for you. Of course, animation in Ultra Engine is really, really super fast. One of the benchmarks demonstrates uh, something like a thousand animated characters running at a very good frame rate. Um, basically, I mean, you can pretty much have as many animated characters as you want. And, but the animation system also is has a lot of new features and is very, very flexible. So bones in Ultra Engine are not an entity. Bones are kind of their own object, and that's one of the reasons it's so fast. But you can attach an entity to a bone, and I'll show you that right now. So we're going to load up a model, an animated model of a character, and then we're going to load this hat, and then we're going to attach the hat to the head bone. And that's how you do hats in Ultra Engine. Now we can also manually adjust the position of bones as well as having, in addition to um, controlling them with animation. So I'm just going to copy that, paste the example here. And now you can see the character is using animation and then there's also programmatic movement that turns the head back and forth. So you could use this to make a character look at something in particular or whatever you want. Although the animation system in Ultra Engine is very, very fast, we can actually make it even faster by sharing a skeleton between two models. Now in the benchmark example, Every single animated character in there is unique and has their own skeleton and is being animated independently. But if we want to double up the, the animation and share it across two models, we can. So here we're going to load an animated character. We're going to create an instance of that. And then we're going to use this set skeleton command so that we have one skeleton being shared across both characters. And when we do that, both characters are going to be animated identically because they're both using the same skeleton base skeleton. And this can be used for uh, animating large uh, crowds of characters. I mean, we're talking you know more than a thousand. Um, we're talking more in the range of like ten thousand. Uh, you can easily do that uh, with this with this feature. Navigation for AI is greatly improved in Ultra Engine. In Leadworks, you had one navigation mesh that was created automatically for the whole world. And in Ultra Engine, it's a lot more explicit. You have uh, complete control over the creation and building of navigation meshes. Navigation meshes can be dynamic so that they adjust as the world changes. So in this example, uh, this just create, this is a very simple example that just creates a navigation mesh. And wherever I click, the character walks. In, in Leadworks, the physics system and the AI navigation was tied together. So it kind of combined the results of both. And in Ultra Engine, those things are separated. So you can actually have characters that don't use the physics system that only use the AI navigation. And that's really good if you have like very, very large numbers of of characters like I mean you can definitely do something like walking uh, left for dead a uh, game like that with thousands of zombies uh, you can easily do that with ultra engine especially with the um, with the uh, speed of the rendering is very very good we have other new features here that you've never seen before we can position and rotate a navigation mesh 
So we can actually change its orientation. And this is really interesting. I'm going to create a navigation mesh and then just tilt the whole world. The camera is not tilted. The camera is looking straight on. But I've just changed the orientation of the nav mesh. What can you do with this? Well, you can make a planet with different, uh, you know, where you have different navigation meshes at different points on the planet. You can make spiders that walk on the ceiling and drop down on you or characters that walk on the walls. It will be interesting to see what people are able to do with this, but this is just kind of the, the whole philosophy of Ultra Engine is to make things, give the user more control and let them do things that might not have been originally anticipated in the original design. So it's just your imagination is the limit and you've got a lot more control to do explicitly what you want. Now brushes are a type of entity that were, they were used internally in Leadworks, but it was never really exposed in the API. And in Ultra, all of this is documented. You have complete access to create brush objects yourself, which are the basis of constructive ge solid geometry. Brushes can be sliced with a plane, like I've done with this. And you can actually get a precise intersection test. Here you can see the, uh, the point where the two solid objects overlap. And you can use this to test the intersection of two convex volumes. So it's just nice to have something that was hidden away in Leadworks, have it all documented and have precise control over how it works in Ultra. Render to texture is another feature that in Leadworks, it, it was there, but it wasn't very well documented and it didn't always work that well. And in Ultra, there's just, there's an example provided. It's very easy to set up. And it's just very well, well thought out, which makes it, which means it's reliable. The player physics in Ultra have also undergone revision. It's a lot smoother now. You'll slide along walls very, very easily. Oh, and we have proper crouching now, finally. So I think this will just make a, a very big impact in the general feel of your games. And then finally, we have the new Entity component System. Now, the Entity Component System, this provides a structure for your program so that you can add modular components to the, to the game without increasing the overall complexity of your, of your program because everything is just compartmentalized really well. And this even supports loading and saving of user-defined objects. And I'll show you an example of that. So in this example, we're going to create an actor for the camera with the entity component system. And then we're going to add this camera controls component. And then down here, we're going to create another actor for this box. And we're going to add this component called mover. And then we're going to set the rotation member of this component to 45, as in degrees per second. And now we just have this box that automatically rotates every frame. And we have these nice built-in camera controls. And this is just nice because we don't have to keep copying and pasting the same code over and over again. You can, you'll notice here, our main loop here just says update and render. It just has two commands. And all of that functionality is reusable and it's all packed away into the component system. And we can just use this in every program we want to. And it's just very a very convenient way to uh, create compartmentalized reusable code. The Entity Component System also allows load and save of a user-defined object. 
And when you do this, it copies all the C++ members along with that object. So I'm going to create a box like before, and I'm going to attach a, uh, a mover component to it. And I'm going to set that rotation to negative 45 degrees per second. And when I copy it, it's going to copy the entire object, but it's also going to copy this rotation value that I set. Now this isn't really possible in normal C++. The way this works is the engine uses a precompiler to pre-generate all the copy code so that when you, when you copy this object, it even is able to copy the C++ members. So it's basically, it adds reflection to C++. Well, this can be used to copy an object, but it can also be used to save the game state. And I can show you an example of that straight from the documentation. Now in this example, we're gonna have a bunch of boxes falling from the sky. And then when I press space, the engine is going to reload the entire scene from the initial state. It's not reloading any objects, it's just reloading the state for each object. We can use this to make our own editing tools so that we can save and load the entire scene in a file format, but we can also use this for game save states. Because remember, all of those C++ members are copied, so the health value, the ammo value, everything in your game can be saved to a file. And so what this means is every single game out there that uses the entity component system, it automatically has built-in save states. So that's a quick introduction into the Ultra Engine API. This is really the game engine that I always wanted to make, but I wasn't able to deliver this to you until now. I think you're going to love using it. I hope you have fun.